Hi, welcome to Study with Rishi, and this is Ten Minute System Design. In this video, we will talk about cache systems. Cache is a short term, typically faster memory. It takes advantage of locality of reference principle. What locality of reference principle is that the recently requested data is likely to be requested again. They are used in almost every computing layer, hardware, operating system, web browser, web application, and many more. A cache, as I said, is a short-term memory. It has a limited amount of space, but is typically faster than the original data source, like your database, and contains the most recently accessed data items only. Caches can exist at all levels in the architecture, but are often found at the level nearest to the front end. Now let's learn about type of caches available. The very first type of cache is application server cache or what we call distributed cache. In this type, each application server node will keep a local cache. Each time a request is made to the service or the server, the node will quickly return locally cached data if it is exist. If it does not exist in the cache, the requesting node will fetch the data from the disk or the database. The cache on one request layer node could also be located both in memory, which is very fast, or on the node's local disk, still faster than going to the network storage. What happens when you expand this to many nodes? If the request layer is expanded to the multiple nodes, it is still quite possible to have each node host its own cache. However, if load balancer randomly distributes the request across the node, the same request will go to different nodes, thus increasing cache limits. To overcome this particular problem, we move to global cache or centralized cache. Sometimes it is possible that cache can be used by many requests or just to make sure that we don't bound a request to go to a particular server only, we use a global or centralized cache. One example of it is Redis. We can also have a mix of mix and match of like distributed and centralized cache. That is also possible. The third uh, type of cache is CDN or content delivery network. Now CDNs are kind of cache that comes into play for site serving large amount of static data like YouTube or Facebook. In a typical CDN setup, a request will first ask CDN for a piece of static media, example, a newly uploaded movie trailer via its URL. The CDN will serve that content if it has its locally available. If it hasn't, then the CDN will query the backend database or backend server for the file, then cache it locally and serve it to the requesting user. Now, let's talk about cache writing strategies. There are three cache writing strategies available. One is write through cache. Under this scheme, data is written to the cache and the corresponding database simultaneously. Although write through cache minimizes the risk of data loss, since every data is written to both cache and the database, that means it is being written twice before returning success to the client, but this has the disadvantage of higher latency for write operation. So we move to the second write writing strategy, which is write around cache. This technique is similar to write through cache, but data is written directly to the permanent storage, bypassing the cache system. This can reduce the cache being flooded with write operation that will not subsequently be reread, but has a disadvantage that a read request for a recently written data will create a cache miss and must be read from slower backend storage, backend database, which will experience higher latency. The third is write back cache. Under the scheme, data is written to cache alone or not to the provided storage, and the completion of the request is done immediately. The write to the permanent storage is done after specified interval or under certain conditions. This results in lower latency and high throughput for write intensive applications. However, this speed comes with the risk of data loss in the case of cache crash or other adverse events because the only copy written data is in the cache, which is a volatile memory. Now let's talk about cache invalidation. The question is, why do we require cache invalidation? If the data is modified in the database, it should be invalidated in cache too. If not, this can cause inconsistent application behavior. Cache can be invalidated while writing data to cache using cache writing technique, which we talked about. Apart from that, we also have some other strategies for cache invalidation. 
The first is TTL or time to live. Each record in the cache will have a time to live, after which it will be deemed invalidated itself. The second is keeping metadata information. We keep a metadata or meta info of each record in DB and in cache. The DB metadata record is kept up to date as per DB record updating or updation. Whenever we access cache, we also compare the meta info of record in cache with the database one. If the record metadata is latest, then use the cache record. If not, then refresh the record from the database. This reduces the latency because here we are not retrieving the whole record from database, but only a small meta info payload. Hence, lesser amount of latency. This, this strategy also makes sure that there is no lazy or dirty read and also the latency to the right is slow, is low. Now let's talk about cache eviction policies. There are a lot of cache eviction policies. First is first in first out. The record which comes first is discarded first. Then there is last in first out. The record which comes last is discarded first. Another is LRU or least recently used. Discard the least recently used items first. MRU, most recently used ones, which are discarded first. LFU, least frequently used. Count how often an item is needed. Those that are used least often are discarded first. Or random replacement. Randomly select a candidate item and discard it to make space whenever this necessary. So this was the video about cache system. If you liked the video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. I'm also a mentor at Scalar Academy and if you have a question around it, I have given my details in the description of the video. Do consider sending me a ping there. In the end, thank you for watching the whole video. I hope you liked it.